I'm I'm okay, you're okay, we're all Many of you are used to me just mumbling as I walk around. <sighs> oh, where is it? Make sure you have gotten some dessert, even if you're not quite ready to eat it. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, nope, that's not where I needed that. I need that to save someplace else. Ugh. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, hey, I already had it saved. Went through all that for nothing. Okay. Okay. So, close that. Close that. Close that. And my drive. Glory, sweat rag. Ah, da 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 da. Almost there. You know, it's not. Like we shouldn't, I shouldn't have had all this set up yesterday. Oh wait, yesterday was a little busy. But I'm getting there for you. I still promise you'll be home in time for kickoff. Well, okay. Oh, we're gonna move the sheep dog. Is that where it is? That's not where it is. Ah, oh, sweet. Found baby Jesus. Okay. One moment. Where did I say that? Um, I saved it in the wrong file, so I couldn't open it on that device, so I unplugged it, so nobody needs to be looking at all that. Um. Uh. 
um, Can you all hear me? All right, more importantly, Tom Lewis, who was supposed to work today and took off so he could live stream this for all those who can't be here, can they hear me? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay, before I call us to order, put on the sparkle that God has given to me. Help me feel that love of Christ that's Sparkle helps us all feel. Whoop, whoop. Okay. And if you wish to speak at this annual meeting, I ask that you please get a microphone um, so that for posterity you can be heard. And I don't, I don't have to repeat what you said. If you don't get a microphone, I have to repeat exactly what you said. And I might roll my eyes at you while I do it since I have warned you to get a microphone. Um, I mean, no, I don't need to use any of it. Okay, for the most part, the agenda that is on page two of the booklet, it will be followed. with an addition later on. All right. <laughs> you ready? I call to order the annual parish meeting of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. We acknowledge that we gather today on the ancestral lands of the Osage, OJT, Sakawi, Kiowa, and Wichita indigenous people. I acknowledge with gratitude the examples of these stewards of the land through the ages. May God grant us wisdom and justice and peace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us who take counsel for, the, for St. Stephen's annual parish meeting, for the renewal and mission of your church, Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First matter of business is to appoint the clerk of the meeting. Would someone please nominate Susan Taylor? Teresa Ryther nominates Susan Taylor. A second was Melanie. Gotcha first. I'm counting on you, though, Amanda. Keep those seconds ready. All in favor say yay. Any opposed? All right, Susan, thank you so much for your willingness to be our clerk. This, the second... <laughs> The second order of business that is not, this one is not in the book, I want to especially acknowledge our two newest adults in the congregation. 
Cooper Winters and Sam Taylor. They have turned 16 and have been confirmed, and therefore they are members of this body. I gave them the choice. They could have gone the youth group or they could, you know, take their place in the councils of the church, and I'm, I'm kind of impressed I won. Um, <laughs> they may not have had a choice. Um, okay, we've appointed the clerk. We have welcomed our newest adults. Um, now, granted, you still can't vote, you still can't go to war, and you still can't buy anything that you have to be an adult to buy. You're just adults in the church. All right. We need to approve the minutes from the January 2023 annual parish meeting. Those were in your book. Ben Winters moved to approve, and Amanda Shield seconded. Are, is there any further discussion? All in favor, say yay. Opposed? Very good. The motion passes, and the minutes are entered into the official record. The nominating report of the nominating committee is on page six of your book. Nominations for election to the vestry for three-year terms. And when I call your name, if you could at least raise your hand. Actually, if you could stand, could you stand so everybody could see you? Don Dineski, Joe Johnson, where? Over here. And Tish Seeley. I would thank you very much for standing. You may be seated. I would uh, take a motion to elect these nominees by acclamation. Julia got her hand up. Ben got the second. Any further discussion? All in favor say yay. Oh, Christ. Julia wasn't raising her hand for the motion, but I've given it to her. Anyway, um, but uh, so first of all, I'm going to say uh, any opposed. Okay, the motion passes, and now I'm going to go backwards and say I declare a quorum. I forgot that part. We have enough people here to be a quorum. It's declared. Okay. All right, next up, nominations for election to the 2024 nominating committee. And the nominating committee positions are just one-year terms. And usually we sucker, I mean convince people to repeat terms on the nominating committee. Um, and I'm so pleased that this year we present uh, Jorinda Brandt, Linda Floyd, there, Kim Vining, over there. Um, and then later a vestry member will be appointed by the 2024 vestry. And Melanie Sheridan, sorry, I turned... My page broke in the wrong place. <laughs> no, you get no no reprieve. Um, and since uh, we have the same number of nominations as we have positions, I would take a motion to elect these nominees by acclamation. Vera got it, and Amanda seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor say yay. Any opposed? Fantastic. The motion passes. I want to thank all those willing to um, put them to say yes to leadership. I, we will do a commissioning at the end of this meeting. Then uh, this is just a, for your information. You don't uh, vote on this. But I nominate the following people to the executive committee which will be voted on by the new 2024 vestry immediately following uh, the closure of this meeting. And I nominate Senior Warden Mike Morrow for a one-year term, and it will be his third and final year of eligibility. Then Junior Warden, I nominate Julia Hart for a one-year term. And for Treasurer, I nominate once again Gina Hollingshead. Oh, there she is over there. Um, so, new vestry members, we will vote on that when we come together after the meeting. So, if you have objections, you better start writing your notes down. 
and then you better be prepared to fill one of the roles that you object to. All right, we are all the way to the presentation of the 2023 financial report. Um, I know in the agenda, it has the 2024 budget and then the financial report from last year, but I'm flipping that around. We're gonna talk about the past before we talk about the future. And I invite Gina Hollingshead to come take a microphone. And just to remind, remind, let's see, testing. Tom will Tom will turn this up a little for you. But you have to talk. Oh, there you go. You have to talk into it. And I'm going to pull the finances up on the screen for you, if that's all right. Perfect. Not yet. Talk closer to your mouth. Okay. All right. You'll see we've got 22 actuals, 23 budget, 23 actuals. And what I'm covering is just highlighting some points on the 23 actuals versus budget. Now what's not printed here that I wanted to start with because it's, I think, quite impressive. Our total expenses, were $12,506 beneath our budget. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Year to date. And you'll see that for each category, total personnel, total admin, total formation, total liturgy, and total building and grounds, every category is underneath budget for the year of 2023. But where we really succeeded, where we really made a difference is in the building and grounds at the top of the page 25. You'll see that our actuals were 68,752 compared to a budget of 78,597. And most of it is in lawn maintenance. You'll see we saved $5,000 and we can thank Ray Dineski and his team of volunteers, we were able to cancel the lawn service agreement, and, which made quite a difference for us. And then in the maintenance, the all maintenance, that covers or includes the snow removal and repairs, you'll see our actuals were $8,342 versus a budget of 13000 So we saved another $4,700. $4,700 there. And are there any questions on expenses? Because if, if there's any one line item or questions, I can handle that, or you can just see me later. Um, I just wanted to take you down to the next section, our expected income. And Again, you'll notice our 2023 actuals were 346,483, and that budget of 294,338. That is what we budgeted at the our last annual meeting. And that is a difference of $52,145. And a lot of that is thanks to all of you who uh, responded to our call back in June. And as well as you'll see our non-pledged donations. We re had $29,693 compared to a budget of 20000 And again, this is due to new families or people who um, have pledged, but they gave more than their pledge in 2023. I'll have you just take a note to the next line over. We've got a budget this year, though, of 15,000 for those non-pledged donations. And that's due to a number of those families that were new. They have turned in pledges for the new year. So we increased our pledged income, but reduced uh, our expected non-pledges. So bottom line, again, this isn't printed on here, but for the year, 
our revenues exceeded our expenses by nine thousand one hundred and forty three dollars for twenty twenty three. We had a surplus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Phew. And, and that can actually be seen. Um, no, it can't. What statement of financial? Is it on page twenty nine? Bottom. Yes, it's okay, on yes, page the 29. That's it. The far left column, the very bottom. $9,142.58 in the black, not the red. Can I make that more clear? <laughs> Yes, so now let's talk about the 2024 budget. So that we ended 2023 and with a smile on our face. So now let's talk about 2024. Okay. Uh, I would, again, I want to just start with expenses. We've got 2024, bottom line, we are budgeting 356934 our budget for 2023, you'll see, was 349846 That's an increase of $7,000, which is just 2% over last year. If You'll see that most of it, if you go to the left page, page 24, is in our total personnel. And first, we... I just want to highlight parish administrator, music director. We uh, vestry approved a 10% increase, and this is in order to bring their salaries closer to market. Um, to someone who is with comparable experience and expertise. We've been inching up, I think, for the last three years, mm -hmm. trying to bring them up to, to market. But the... Very first line, rector's salary. At the very last vestry meeting, a proposal was made to give Mother Lori an increase. Now, she hasn't had one since she hired on in 2021, and nothing in her contract has a built-in um, increase for merit or just a cost of living increase. So a proposal had to be made, and what the number that was arrived at, 76500 this was in order to bring her up to the rate that was listed when her position was first uh, went out there in 2021. So this is just bringing her up to the rate that she was, that position was listed for when it was first advertised. So it's a starting point. I, I I would like the record to show that I tried to argue. Yes, she did. It, it took a number of, uh, or, yes, she had three uh, conditions before she would accept this uh, offer. And we finally met that third condition when we balanced the budget. So then she was able to accept the offer the vestry was finally raised. Thank you. We thank you for all you've done. So ex everything else is pretty close to where they were in the prior year. We just had some tweaks for known increases, like in our utility rates. And uh, on the lawn maintenance, we still had the budget for uh, service that could be expected on the sprinkler system so there's we have a still have a thousand in there but everything else is pretty well close to prior year um so going down though to our revenues that's where we got an eleven thousand two hundred and fifteen thousand two hundred fifteen thousand dollar increase over our prior year Uh, much of that is due to your pledges. You'll see that $332,324 has been pledged for the new year. 
versus our prior year of 234723 That's $26,700 more. So bottom line, if you take that budgeted income, 356, excuse me, 357,000 versus our budgeted expenses, 356,900, that gives us the balanced budget with a surplus of $765. Now, Madam Treasurer, does this mean and we can just sit back and chill out and not try to increase giving? Why, no. <laughs> <laughs> as we all know, there are unexpected expenses, such as we're not quite covered if that furnace, if we have another furnace go out. So little things like that, we could still, anybody who has not yet pledged, we ask that you turn in a pledge so we know we are uh, covered and uh, in a better position, as well as, as we all know, our programs are really growing. The children's uh, programs are expanding and um, our outreach is expanding through DOK. Uh, the music program, is, you've just really increased the numbers again and it's, we wanna make sure that is the vestry and finance want to make sure these programs get all the funding that they need to continue growing and meet their needs. Thank you. Are there any questions for the treasurer? I would like to take your attention to page uh, 30, the dedicated counts, accounts dedicated funds. Um, what I just want to tell you something really simple. We're not going to like kind of go through this, but this, this top chunk of this page is, is your programming and special things that we don't have to have to operate, to be a parish. We don't have to have a music program. We don't have to have a children's program. We don't have to have youth, but these special things need funding to be able to happen. So they're not line items in the budget because we have created the special dedicated funds. So um, earmarked donations can go into there and be able to perpetually support those programs. For example, the Youth Scholarship Fund, when you all buy cinnamon rolls on Super Bowl Sunday, those funds will go in there. Um, and now, you know, it may look like, oh my gosh, we've got $2,700 in the Youth Scholarship Fund. Surely that's enough. Well, when it's over $500 to send one kid to summer camp, and we've got at least seven that need full scholarships, do the math. And you can see that's why we continually just do little fundraisers to try to keep those things funded. Um, but not, I don't, they aren't in the budget because that's operations, and we don't have to do these things to operate. Also, operations is, on, is that which is calculated for apportionment. Non-operations dedicated funds are not. Since this is being, going out over the internet, that's all I'm gonna say about that. If you need further explanation, I'm happy to give it. Any further financial discussion? Thank you, Gina, very much for your service as well. <laughs> Members of the Finance Committee, can you raise your hand? Ah, ah Joe Johnson wants to speak. Okay, but Finance, yeah. Finance Committee, we've got uh, Gina and Vera and Ben and Jason's down in youth group, um, and Rick, okay, anyway, Finance Committee has worked really hard to help prepare a vision that then goes to the vestry, and we're working together really well through um, all the financial decisions of the year. I uh, 
the chair recognizes Mr. Joe Johnson. Uh oh, is that one not on? Ah. Uh, Joe Johnson moves we approve the financial reports as written. Um, uh, I'm going to slightly change the wording that we receive them. Um, the vestry approved them, but uh, are you uh, acceptable of that amendment? Okay. Joe has moved we receive the financial reports as presented. John Norton seconds that. Any further discussion? All in favor say yay. Any opposed? Yes, sir, you may. Oh, yeah, microphone. Otherwise, I got to repeat what you say. Sorry, I forgot. Thank you, Don. As, as, there we go. Hey. Has the diocesan apportionment rate increased, or is it remaining the same between 22, 23, and 23, 24? Um, as a member of the Finance Committee, I can tell you we tried to hold it steady, but it, the rate had to go up just a little bit. But if you look in the budget, um, on page 25, the very last item up there at the top of the, on the expenses, the very last item is our apportionment, and you will see our, our apportionment calculation went down slightly, even though the rate slightly went up. And that is from the wise management of how funds are taken care of by your finance committee and vestry. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Any, any other? Okay. Um, uh, Teresa? Yes, this is a new thing in our diocese. <laughs> all the parishes in 2023 paid all of their apportionment. And the reason that's so exciting is because for about 20 years, there's been at least one parish, usually the same parish, that has not. And that means all the rest of us have to carry that. And so that everyone is stepping up and holding um, to their part of, of the mission and ministry and outreach outside the parish wall and in the diocese uh, helps us as well. So that was a very exciting bit of news from the diocese. Um, all of the written reports for all the different ministries and all sorts of things are in this beautiful booklet. And um, uh, we just accept those reports and I encourage you to please uh, read them. People took time to write them after some of us, after being nagged over and over and over again, and some of us turning it in at the last second before printing. Um, uh, Barbara Pfizer, you were the first to turn in your written report. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure I was the last. So Amanda and I were competing to be the last report turned in. Did you, did, were you last? All right. <laughs> but it got in there. All right. Whew. We are all the way down to the rector's address. And stay tuned, because after my address is when we got a really great presentation on our upcoming project. So. Uh, if you start to yawn, get some more coffee. I won't mind while I go. All right. Once again, this year, I have uh, brought this special token that I keep on my desk. It keeps me ever mindful that I am called to be your sheepdog. Um. We have one good shepherd, Jesus Christ, and as the sheepdog of Christ, it is my charge to watch over the flock of St. Stephen's, to nip your heels, to help you go where the shepherd is calling you to go, and sometimes just to rest with you in the field. 
each day. I listen, I listen to Christ for that direction, and you all have responded amazingly. This morning in worship, we heard from Psalm 111. I'm going to uh, paraphrase verse 2 of Psalm 111. Great are the deeds of God. They are studied by all who delight in them. I chose this translation of the psalm because of the immense pride, I confess the sin of pride, I feel about St. Stephen. We are being studied by other parishes in this diocese. We are looked at by parishes across the country. I'm in a number of colleague groups from for Episcopal clergy around the country, and our thriving in this current era, is noticed. Great are the deeds of God. They are studied by all who delight in them. It is God who has made us thrive, but it is your hearts that have been open to God's inspiration to do that. The scripture for our stewardship campaign this year, which was uh, called Rooted in Abundance, comes from the 17th chapter of Jeremiah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Now, this stewardship campaign is written and produced by the Episcopal Network for Stewardship. So it's a a canned campaign that a group of really smart people put together each year, a theme. But I have never seen a theme match a parish more than this theme matches St. Stephen. We are like a tree planted by water. We are sending our roots out. The yellow hallway and the youth room downstairs, they are full of our roots. Oh my gosh. We are not afraid when heat comes. Last year, we had a $56,000 deficit that we started the year. And I know some of us were terrified. But as a body, we held together the hope in, in the acceptance of God's abundance. It takes all of us to hold up one another when we're afraid, when there is heat, and drought, but together as this body in St. Stephen's, we are not anxious, and we continue to bear fruit. We have lived into the, this prophecy from Jeremiah by welcoming new sheep into our fold. I know there are a number of folks here that have just come in the last year or two. If you feel comfortable, would you raise your hand? Will, you guys came like two years ago, right? You guys came here like two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so, there, there, yeah, there you go. Raise your hand. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, man, I'm an introvert. Don't call on me. <laughs> you're, you're reading the book. I get it. I get it. Yeah. We have welcomed so many new sheep into this fold. And they have been quick to say, I'd like to be a member because there's something really special going on here. We have sheep caring for sheep, and that is so important. As I said in my written report that I'm sure all of you will read every word of because I spent a lot of time getting it to Vera at midnight. Um, <laughs> Sheep caring for sheep is the only way to make new sheep. Um, we show up for each other. We pray for each other. We visit one another. I am called here as your sheep dog, and I thrive in celebrating the sacraments with you. And I walk with you to care for one another. Some congregations um, are trying to face this new era of, of anxiety in, in Christendom whereas the general number of people that call themselves Christians, yet alone those who say they're Episcopalian, is 
a trend that's a little nerve-wracking. But some congregations are responding to that in ways that, that they need to for their context. They cannot have a priest. They cannot afford a priest. They maybe need to raise up more lay leaders just to have worship. We are not only thriving, but able to have a full-time rector, and that allows the, the worship is taken care of. That allows the talent and energy of all of you to go towards caring for one another, to go towards taking the care of God out into the world. You don't have to worry about, will worship happen on Sunday morning if I don't show up? I hope you've read my inclement weather policy. <laughs> Worship will happen even if you've been assigned a job. You don't have to show up. But caring for one another needs you. We're also living into this prophecy with our children. And I've already told you, talked about that. Our roots are spreading deep because of the, so many children. Uh, I am looking forward to. Um, baptizing a couple of folks coming up soon, and um, hopefully once again uh, in Holy Week, we will have uh, a child lead us to communion. Everyone has been willing to step up. We show our roots and our branches, and we bear fruit when we are taking the belovedness of God's children out into the world. We rejoice in God's truth by the service of others, the work done at the Lord's Diner, Sandwich Saturday. Our care for Price Harris, the amazing pile of gifts we took for foster kids at St. Francis Ministries, the financial gifts and countless hours of volunteerism happening at Breakthrough ESS. Those are the reasons we're thriving. We're not having to worry about Sunday morning. We're able to open our hearts and minds to what else can we do for God's kingdom. Remembering from my sermon that I didn't mean to give, but I gave, this is God's realm. The powers of darkness, the powers that make us fear and bring anxiety, they are not in charge anymore. And we are an example to everyone else out there that you can live in the hope and the faith of the abundance that God will bring. In conclusion, we are doing really well but we're not going to stop. I am giddy that we achieved the three things I asked for before I would accept a raise. So yeah, sure, I'm giddy at getting a raise, but it's about that we achieved these three things. My three goals were, one, to convince this congregation to pass an honest budget that said, this is what it costs to be this church, even if the pledges did not show it could be supported. So a deficit budget. We did that last year. Big time. The second goal, so that's, that's my showing the, the leadership of the vestry, of your leaders, that we can do this, to have faith to do this. Then my second goal was to show and get everyone to step up and close that gap, that we can take care of what we need to care for. And you all did. Between June 1st and July 1st, that deficit was wiped out. And then my third goal was the hope that someday we could pass a balanced budget. I'll be honest. I told the vestry that, you know, a balanced budget in the church world is like a $10,000 debt. I was kind of cushioning that a little bit because I, I just know my experience in church leadership across 15 years has never shown pledges to equal operations. And you did, doggone it. 
So we, we have every reason to boast in Christ about the love that we are showing for one another. And for all of that, I am grateful and thankful to you. I'm thankful to those who are watching this at home that couldn't be here. Those that tune in every Sunday, I don't want you ever to feel guilty about watching church from home. You chose to watch church when most of society isn't. You are every bit as important a member of this congregation and as those who are here. You're still part of this family. And we love to see you when we can see you. But thank you for choosing to be a part of us anyway. And thank all of you for being here and your willingness to support those who can't. Amen. That was a well-timed applause to say, bring it home, Mother Lori, bring it home. All right. Now I'm going to get the, the special presentation. Um, Hold up. And this is the presentation on um, on our building project. Uh, for those that were able to come to our picnic uh, in July, that was a, a picnic to say, please raise your giving so we could get rid of the deficit turned into a thank you for closing the deficit gap. So now let us tell you about something really exciting that's coming. Oh. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, and that is us moving forward on the Phillips Thompson Pavilion. As you arrived to church this morning, you may have noticed uh, four, four posts with some construction tape drawn around them. After we adjourn today, I encourage you to go walk out the doors and walk around that, around, not through. It's super muddy, around that. That is, it's pretty on the nose, right? That's where and how big our outdoor pavilion is going to be. And this pavilion is made possible because of the gifts of two saints who have gone on the glory, Ennis Phillips and Bill Thompson. And we presented the idea to you in July, and since then, things have come together. We've met um, with Hutton Construction, who is uh, completing the final design. And God willing and the vestry consenting, big piece of it. I promise we're not doing anything without it. Transparency. Um, God willing and the vestry consenting, we will be breaking ground in the next four to six weeks. That is applause worthy. Um, in fact, I have so much faith. Now, I want you to all remember, me having faith we could pay the bills when it didn't look like we could, and we did. So I have faith <laughs> So much faith that it will be approved uh, that when the bishop comes in three weeks, we're going to do a ceremonial groundbreaking. You know, the whole golden shovels and praying and blessing and all that fun stuff. So I do hope uh, you can be here that day. Now, Don Norton has been our lead in working with uh, Hutton Construction and 310 Architects. And I am going to pull pictures up and He's going to talk about it. Do you want him in general order? Kind of. Did you want the scheme, the schematic first, plan first? Sorry. I knew that. You told me. Plan first. And I, there we go. Right. And I have to shrink it to get it. Nope, I got it. I'm sure you can tell exactly what this is. Tom, do you have your laser pointer in the building? I'm, I'm, You're gonna is this point? on? Yes. Yeah. You just got to keep it close. I got to walk around all your cords. I know. You're, I'm a tripping hazard. You're very much a tripping hazard in here. Don't tell church insurance. Won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, this is this is basically just a plan view. Closer to your mouth. And those four posts with that yellow construction tape on there represent these one, two, three, four corners of the covered pavilion that we'll get into some some uh, pretty pictures here. But this is the door going out of the kitchen onto this. This is all going to be a, a paved area that will be all of this will be basically at the same level. So we will have at this floor right here at this floor level. So we'll walk out that door and we'll just kind of be we'll walk out this door right here and we'll be right into the center of the space. <clears throat> And I know folks on this side of the room, you probably can't see it very well, but I'm, we're, I'll put this image back up at the end, and we can answer questions as you come up and look really closely at it. And the, the existing sidewalk that parallels the driveway comes right along here and goes out. And our handicapped parking that's over here, this will all be at the basically the same grade, but it's every, everything's going to be ADA accessible coming up this way to come into the pavilion or coming around this way into the pavilion. And I think we can get into a couple of, of early schematic images that, that basically represent what this is going to look like. But front door of the church is down here. The port chair is down here. And the inside of this open pavilion, which will just have perimeter columns, it will have some handrail that you'll see in the images that come around here because of the. This is at one elevation, and of course we got to have grade coming down here that pretty much matches what's already there. So, so to keep people from stepping off or falling off, uh, there, there will be handrail in here. So, Mr. Norton, <clears throat> the sidewalk that's currently out there has a bit of a tripping hazard. <clears throat> it's going to well, be gone. Thank you. It's going to be gone and replaced. Leading question. It, it, it goes right in. It, the new construction will go right into the back of the curb. The curb in the driveway stays just exactly like it is. All right, are we ready for the pictures then? Or you have more to say here? No. All right. Pictures are fine. All they right. tell a thousand words. They do. Um, I think. I'm going through them <clears throat> this direction. There we go. So don't pay any attention. These are early schematics, and, and we've changed this a little bit. But I mean, here's the door right here coming out that right door. over there. Door. The glass oh. door. That glass yeah, door no, that's is right there. the glass there. door. That it, glass door. You'll, yeah. This whole area is basically at the same elevation as this floor. <clears throat> Grades will change here a little bit because this will be flat clear on out here as well and all the way around the building to this other door. So we'll have a, a big outdoor uh, event space here that's not underneath the canopy as well as this 1,600 square foot space that is under the canopy, which will be basically reflects this a similar mansard design that we have around the church right now. It will be shingled with the same brand new shingles that we have just put up this last year on the church, so it will all match. And as you can see, these eight-inch square columns are basically the only thing that you will, that, that, uh, that would obstruct any views out there. So pretty much matches the existing architecture of the church. Um, and, 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 and this this person that's in the schematic, that's me. I plan on doing a lot of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> so I can turn sideways and do that. Yeah. All right. We've, we've got a couple more views that, that go on around. There's... There's kind of the deal. This is our handicapped parking over here that exists right now. Um, yes, we, do, we don't lose or change any parking spaces. The handicapped spaces will get just a little bit wider um, when we 
has to be done with construction. We'll repaint the stripes out there and what have you. But like I said, this will this will all be basically sidewalk where we don't have anything to maintain uh, up against the church. So this is from the drive-through drive, the view. And the kitchen door is like... No, no to the left. To the left? All right. Yeah, right left. about in there. So anything will be able to be wheeled out of the kitchen and right, out, right outside to serve. Like the construction schedule on this... <laughs> Assuming that everything gets approved at the late February vestry meeting, we really get will get going uh, full speed ahead in the month of March, and the goal is to have it functional for our June 9th ice cream social. That's the goal. That's that's the goal. My. Um, it may not be completely done, but it should be functional. We should be able to ribbon cut. And uh, I'm, I'm working on, uh, the bishop is visiting Derby that weekend, and I'm hopeful that she can swing by. And if she's coming with the golden shovels in February, then she can come with the giant scissors. Maybe. I mean, don't <laughs> quote me on that, but that's my goal. <laughs> yes. So the question's there. about electricity in the pavilion. You know who Mother Lori's married to, right? <laughs> okay. I found a there really good be, looking electrician. There will be electricity. There might even be lightning special effects. I don't know. There's probably going to be too much electricity, but we're future-proofing it. Yeah. Jorinda. And it will have, it will have um, conduit for our audio-visual to where we will have... Um, Maybe not on day one, but we're going to be set up to where we can have speakers, much like we have in this room, to where we can have uh, tie it into our sound system. Uh, so we'll, live streaming all that, all that jazz. Right. So we're we are, like she said, future proofing it as best we possibly can. Dorinda. Dorinda. Yes. Yes, this door is part of our, our electronic door lock grant we got for the, I think. No, it's not. It's that door. We can add it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can find somebody to fork up a, a couple hundred bucks so we can add it there. <laughs> it's, it's a goal. Sorry. I spoke yes. too soon. Yeah. Well, there is going to be a gap between the two buildings. It, uh, Unfortunately, we couldn't get around that. Yeah, it, it got prohibitively costly to overlap and tie the two buildings together. <clears throat> but it's a small gap, and I, I know this congregation fairly well. I don't think we'll be doing stuff outside if it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just have that feeling. Maybe the youth group will. There's no deterring them. Right. Yep. So you look at look at this uh, plan. This, it's all flat floor. I mean, you you roll right out that door, and you can roll underneath the eave that we the soffit that we have here, and there's about a about a four foot gap to get underneath. But it's all the same level. You're just rolling right out there. We're actually removing dirt. Yeah, I, 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 we will have some compacted fill that they'll have to bring in to build this up. So the dirt, yeah. There's a lot of concrete that's going yeah, to fill in that. Yeah. No, it's it's not to that point yet. I believe and it, March. And it, it hasn't gone through the 99% working drawings. Print them all out. I've got a box of red pens. And then we'll get back and finish it up on the multidiscipline level. <laughs> <laughs> Rob.
Remind me, Joe, what the MAPC is. Planning Commission. Ah, thank you. And we, we, we won't have amplified music capacity because we're not going to have those kinds of speakers. Right. We're not going to have concert speakers. I mean, when we have the ice cream social and, and those people bring their own things, yeah. you know, potentially, potentially we might get there on an afternoon, but I, I don't. I, what we're going to put in permanently isn't going to generate that much sound bar. Exactly. It'd be like this, right? Um, <clears throat> and I, my, the one of the benefits of this structure is that we plan on benefiting the neighbors. And if you benefit the neighbors, they're less likely to be cranky. If we have a sing along that gets a little rowdy. <laughs> Just the same, like we yeah. were, they're our neighbors and we want to be neighborly to them and that is fully our plan. Promise, Joe, we won't amplify the bagpipers. <laughs> <laughs> they can amplify themselves. <laughs> but you think how loud the bagpipers are when they come to a worship inside? How about on bagpiper day we have worship outside in the new pavilion? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, Joan. <laughs> For those at home, the question was about, are we talking to the neighbors now? And actually, there has been some communication. We've had some email when we were um, working on the roof last year and stuff, and we've, uh, whenever given the opportunity, um, where a neighbor reaches out and asks us a question, we tell them, hey, there's some really exciting things that are coming, and it, we're, we're planning on making, making space for you. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So the question was about its availability to the neighbors, and absolutely, folks, the neighborhood community meeting could happen there, and we don't even have to be here. I mean, uh, a family from across the way could have extra family over for dinner and not have enough, you know, and they can come over and, I, I mean, we are absolutely, it's going to be available for our neighbors. We can, we can very comfortably see probably about 120 uh, and still have room for an altar table and, uh, up front, so I mean, it it will it will seed 120 pretty easily for like an outdoor wedding or something like that as a, as a service. And that's under the roof. Yeah, that's I under mean, the roof. If assuming that it, they're it's a lovely day, they, they can have seating outside of the roof on our wonderful flat patio that will be the exact same height as it. Yes, Karen. Karen. It's it's going to have a, a little hip, just like this. You'll 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 see a little more roof up here, and there's a ridge line. These are scissor trusses, so the inside of the area isn't flat. It it ridges up also, and it's going to, going to be finished with the tongue and groove type material like you see under the portico share. <clears throat> Well, it, yep. it, it that kind of shows the, yeah. the bulk of what it what it's really going to look like. Um, Hutton Construction. They are when Hutton Construction was first founded by Mark Hutton. Our renovation of this parish was the first project that Hutton Construction did and was was successful on, and it was our renovation back in ninety was just under a million dollars. And the the concrete retaining, like the, the big concrete retaining wall here and there, that was done then. And look at the quality of how it still looks. Right. That's the kind of work we're expecting and, out of it. And their, their superintendent 
that was on the job back in 92 was a gentleman by the name of Jim Costello. He is still there, and that is our primary contact on putting this whole project back together. Karen? Yeah, you're, you're saying enough, I don't want to repeat it. <laughs> I think the impact of this structure because of Ennis and Karen and Barbara and Bill cannot be understated. It's um, going to be a huge advantage to, to St. Stephen's and we all owe a huge thank you. I know Karen's here, I don't know if Barbara's not here, is she? No. No, but Karen, thank you. For getting this going and amen to Ennis and to Bill. Thank you, Karen, for point thank you, Karen, thank you, Karen, all the Karens, thank you. <laughs> um, for pointing that out. It really and I at, at the reception for Jody Seymour's funeral yesterday, at the reception, I ran in to David Thompson, Bill Thompson's son. And we got to talking about this project. And he said, you know, he, it, to paraphrase the long conversation, he's so excited that it's being used for something special. He's, you totally could have used it just to pay the electric bill. We didn't put any restrictions on it. I go, but no, we step up and we handle what it costs to operate this parish. This is going to create something we could never do with just our annual budget. And it's really exciting. And so. Um, we're planning to make sure and communicate well with um, Philip's daughter, grandkids, uh, Bill's kids, and make sure that they're able to, you know, for that ribbon cutting or whatnot, that they can be a part of that and see uh, the what's been created from the legacy of uh, their dad. I'll feel better doing that after the vestry votes to go. Um, well, we, I, okay, so we can't vote to go until they get us the final dollar. And it will be a not to exceed bid, so we'll have a cap. And it may be that all the amazing uh, fancy lighting speakers, all the plans that Tom Lewis has made, it may be that they just get roughed in. And when we hit our do not exceed cap, those might have to come late. He'll cry a little, but I'll comfort him, I promise. <laughs> um, this schedule that I've put up um, uh, is very, it's a big estimate. But that, that hope is, if you can see the very last line, project completion, is that first week of June. So um, that's what we're really hoping for. Now, what will it take for the vestry to vote go? Well, we have, from the, the two estates, um, we have currently sitting in a high yield savings account, $268,000 and some change. Um, 14,000 of that, right? has been interest we earned because we put it in a high yield savings account. So I'm just saying, that was smart. Um, and we had initially thought that, that that 270 was going to be um, kind of that range. Well, it's not. Um, I'm not coming to you for a capital campaign or anything. This is, this will, um, there are saints of the congregation that, um, going to talk to about closing the gap. It's, we probably need about 60 to do everything that we want to do, but like I said, we can, we can pull out some of the finishes and finish it later. But it will be there, and all the, the conduits and the places for those things to go will be there. Um, the, the, the vestry has uh, expressed their desire that every uh, penny needed be in hand before we say go, which makes complete sense. I am working on approaching um, 
some folks that have said they want to have a living legacy, um, whereas you know, we, we love that Ennis and Bill thought of their legacy after they went to glory. There's some folks that want to have a living legacy where they um, want to fund things while they're still here. And I'm going to hope that we can close that $60,000, $65,000 gap with a living legacy. Um, the pavilion is the Ennis Phillips, Bill Thompson Pavilion. Uh, I'm thinking all the patio and party space could, could be have another naming option for for put your name here. <laughs> naming yeah, buy the naming rights to the amazing uh, patio, uh, St. Stephen's patio party area. Um, but if I can get pledges from some living legacies to fill that gap, then my hope is the vestry will approve to sign and say go. Because living givers like to earn as much on their gift before they have to write it. And the last, the check that is going to require more than what we currently have invested in our high yield savings account is on, hang on, I wrote, I did math this morning. Y'all thought I looked tired, that's why. Um, will be on June 1st. So if a, if a living legacy wants to give us that last closing amount, I could see them wanting to keep it invested and have their stock sold or something, say, in May, and that comes. So that would mean it's not in our hand when we sign the contract. So I'm just laying out the possibilities for you vestry folks of kind of the, the conversation I hope to have. But um, this is going to happen, and it's, it's going to be real, and we are going to celebrate. Joe will have to work on the final drainage just for, <laughs> for the contractors on the final payment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is our... Uh, Final, um, the final presentation. Where are we at? We're at 110. Oh, hang on. I, I got to commission some people, but let me pick my jaw up off, off the floor that we're at 110. It's been given. Uh, if it would make anybody feel better, we can move to accept it. Huh? Karen, move to accept the reports as published. Amanda Shield gives a second. All in favor say yay. yay. Anybody opposed? Because if you're opposed to accepting these written reports, you can write them over. <laughs> okay, I would like to ask um, all who have been elected to um, come stand around Jorinda, because Jorinda was elected to the nominating committee, and I'm not going to make her come stand up here. So everybody come stand, uh, vestry members, nominating committee. <laughs> you don't have to move. You're totally fine. Here, I'll, we're, I'll block you. <laughs> yeah, come, yes, Don. Uh, vestry? No, the whole vestry. I'm commissioning y'all. <laughs> All y'all. All y'all. Pull your chair over. <laughs> and Gina, as a member of the executive committee. Yeah. All right. She's. She feels she's. Yeah. She's with Joe. We're all. We're all here. All here. <laughs> all right. Anybody who's not here uh, is included in these prayers. I present these people to be commissioned as church leaders, these people here, and to serve on the Vestry Executive Committee or Nominating Committee. Do y'all, in the presence of this congregation, commit yourselves to this new trust and responsibility to do say, I do. I do. Will you all, all y'all, 
who witness this beginning support and uphold all, all these persons and this community in this ministry. If, if you do say, we will. Let us pray. Blessed God, you call forth light from darkness. Send the power of your spirit upon these, your servants, as they carry your gospel through their work of leadership. May your light so fill them that they may shine with your radiance, drawing all to the brightness of your love and mercy. Through Jesus, our Savior, the true light. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I got one. I, I, I got to pray, then I'll adjourn. Kick off. So, like, I got 45 minutes to spare. I could keep talking, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I have thank yous to present. Um, three folks leaving uh, Vestry uh, this year um, include uh, Rick Gaskell, who cannot be here today, um, and Dorinda Brandt and Linda Floyd. You take Dorinda's. I'll take Linda's. And as is my reputation, I give a box of Valentine's chocolates. It's okay if you give them away. It's still an ex ex exhibit of, that we love you. And I'm just lucky that Valentine's chocolates are always for sale when the annual meeting happens. Thank you for your service on Vestry. And then I have, yes, please applaud. I know I cannot possibly remember to thank all the people that I thank in my head and in my sleep and in my prayers. Know that I thank you. And if you feel you should have received something and publicly been thanked, please tell Julia and she'll slyly hint to me that I should have done that and I'll do it next Sunday. <laughs> um, but I do have uh, one more big gift for uh, Julia Hart. After nurturing, sustaining, growing our Sunday school program through a pandemic, nonetheless, is finally saying, the right person's come along, and Sabrina that we commissioned in the service this morning is, uh, is taking over the leadership at Sunday school. And yeah, you like my wrapping paper? <laughs> I told, told Tom, wrap it in your coat and walk in so nobody, she doesn't see it. You get the biggest heart of all. <laughs> There's a little bit of an inside joke with that, but uh, I really mean you have my big heart. Okay, let me, is there any further business to come before this, 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 y'all? Body, thank you. Mike. Yes, like I said uh, earlier, uh, new vestry members, we will come together immediately following this and we'll do our organizational vote over wardens and such. Any other business? I'm not the shepherd. I'm the sheepdog. Okay. The Lord be with you. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I love a good gavel.